I'm running a pretty cool part today, the Titan 810. I'm making it out of 304 stainless steel. And I actually brought it into SolidWorks. This is the original part here, but then I scaled it up a little bit so that I could fit my four inch material that I'm running this out of. Made things a little bit bigger, changed the threads on it. For the first tool, I'm running a DNMG 432 and that's with a KCU 10B insert. For this tool, we're gonna to be facing down the front of the part and then I'm gonna be roughing away as much of the OD as I can. It's gonna be particularly important on this part to have this 3D model so that I have the angle right here. I wanna make sure when I rough into the part that the angles all match up when I'm doing my undercuts. So here's the roughing pass. And you can see when I simulate it, I've got my step downs like normal. And then it comes to the front of the part. It does the first half of the ball here. And then it starts doing undercuts. And it goes to the back end of the ball and it roughs downwards. So here, you can see that the clearances get a little bit tight here because now I've got this angle of the tool coming up against the ball of the part. So I need to make sure the tool clears and I need to make sure I give myself enough clearance for that undercut. So I'll go to my roughing parameters. I have it at 400 SFM with a feed rate of 12 thousandths per revolution. We got a 90 thousandths step to cut and I'm leaving 10 on all sides. And then if you look at my plunge parameters, we have it set so that we can do plunge cutting. And then I give myself a 10 degree back clearance angle. And I adjusted that back clearance until I was happy when I was simulating this to make sure that the back of the tool, that it wasn't going to hit itself in this area here every time it came down. We roughed out as much as we could with that first tool. You can see the profile of the part here. I've got some stock left over on this bottom end here but we took out as much material as we could. The next tool running is the KSEM drill from Kenna Metal, and I've got an eight times D length drill that's 28 millimeters in diameter. And this drill will let me finish the entire hole through this part. I'm running it at 1,100 RPM with a feed rate of 5 thousandths per revolution. The next tool after that, we're gonna be finishing as much of the OD as we can. Now this is gonna be a little bit of a trick pass. I've got a VNMG 331 with a UP chip breaker and I'm using the KCU 10B grade again. Now you can see on this pass, it pretty much follows the same, the same path as the first tool. It actually stays off of that angle a little bit so it doesn't hit the back of the tool. The other thing I do is I flip the insert direction and the spindle direction. So now the insert's on the other side and the spindle's spinning in the direction that I can cut on that side. And then we can come across the top and I can do some roughing passes on the back end of that ball feature. And these are all 20 thousandths passes. Then I do a final finishing pass with that angle and then we match up with the leftover stock from the first finishing pass. It's something unique to the 9-axis and the SMX2100 because you can switch directions of that tool and of the angle of the tool. So all the turning work is done, so now we can start milling the part. The first milling tool I'm gonna to bring up is the KT4 shell mill. It's a two inch diameter tool, five flutes, and this is to mill the flat on the top of the part. And this is gonna come across the top in two passes and do 40,000 step downs until it gets to the final depth. For the step over, I have it at an inch and a half, so three quarters of the tool, but it doesn't actually go full engagement with this tool because we're coming in from the previous turning operations. 
so we have that ball feature here. So at the start of the operation, it's not taking off too much because that first depth is just touching the top of that ball. As we get further into the passes, we're taking off more and more material. We do one final pass. I raise up the SFM to 700 SFM, feed rate of 2,000 per tooth. That puts it at 14 inches per minute. We just do one final finish pass to size. So we got our flat on the top of the part. The next tool I'm gonna to bring in is a drill going through the middle of it. I've got a drill fix pro that's one inch, 219 thousandths diameter. I've got a KM50 holder that can hold inch and a quarter diameter tools into it. And then that has to go into an extension to the C6 holder that I've got in the machine. But we're gonna make what we got work and honestly with all, with how long this drill is sticking out, now it kind of looks, uh, now it kind of looks cool. We're not going very deep into the part. We just have to reach this bottom shoulder for this inside bore here. So it's really only going in like an inch into the part. So here's the top view and we just go straight down. So the next tool that's coming up, we're gonna be running an end mill to finish these two bores inside of the part. We just start right in the middle from our previously drilled hole, and then we do circular passes until we reach our size. For those roughing passes, I'm doing 30,000 step overs to bring it to size, and then it does one final finished pass, taking off 10 thousandths of material. For that one, I keep the spindle speed the same, but I slow it down to eight inches per minute. We got these brand new chip conveyors from Henning on all of our machines. This is my first time using it on the SMX and it's awesome. They got chip conveyors and high pressure coolant units, so check them out. So after those bores are done, now we're gonna drill the six holes at the top of the part. And these are for M10 threads we're gonna be putting into it. The tool I'm using is an 8.5 millimeter drill from Kenametal, just one of their solid carbide drills. I'm running it at 1200 RPM with a feed rate of five inches per minute. That puts it at about 105 SFM. These holes are only going about half an inch deep. The last tool in this part is our thread mill. And this is to put the M10 by 1.5 threads into those drilled holes. I'm using one of Kenametal's metric thread mills. This is a two times D thread mill. I'm running this tool at 200 SFM with a feed rate of 10.9 inches per minute. For this pass, we start straight in the middle and then we go 10,000 steps of cuts until we reach our size. It was really fun running 304 stainless again and the part came out wonderful. And we actually have an OP2 planned later on. Trevor is actually on the 3D printer right now printing us some jaws to hold on to this surface 
so you're not going to want to miss that. Stay tuned to our channel. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.